Dear participants, good afternoon. Now it's time for the keynote speaker to give his speech. Hüseyin Yanar is an author, devoted learner and mentor. He has lived, taught for in four different countries and learned from four different cultures and is always captivated by the charms of art and architecture of which he follows. He believes that there are many architectures, not only one. For him, space for growth is very essential to find a unique way for a person in our field. He also thinks that better to forget architecture and go out of it as much as possible and come back powerfully to see everything with a new, fresh and critical eye. Yana graduated with his high honors from the Istanbul State Academy of Fine Arts and finalized his PhD on Rhythm and Rhythmic Volumetry in Architecture and taught at the same institution for many years. His journey at Oxford Brookes University started with his Master of Philosophy thesis on rhythmic patterns, where he spent five years also directing architectural design studios and giving lectures. Later followed his Finland experience, where he joined also Tampere Universities and Helsinki Fine Arts Academy mentoring uh, many years, many students. Yanar uh, wrote uh, one of the three articles in the book of Finnish Architectural Biennale Selection 2010 and 11. And he, he participated in the exhibition Istanbul Stream and Bridges with his work, Father Ayasofya at the Finnish Art Academy in 2012. Later, Yanar was invited to Dusondong University of South Korea and became associated professor in 2013 and 14. In the exhibition of Two Paths to Silence, together with Finnish artist Jussi Tainan, his texts were exhibited at the Museum of Finnish Architecture in 2014. Yanar also took part in Tallinn Architecture Biennale with his drawings, lecture, and workshop in 2015. His book, Portraits, in which has an introduction from Ioannip Falazma was published in 2011 in Finland. Attracted a lot of interest in region and got one of the prizes to most beautiful Finnish books 2011. Now he's finalizing the second volume of portraits. In recent years, uh, Yenar has been teaching in the experimental studios of the urban meditation course in urban planning group, Faculty of Built Environment, Tampere University, Finland. He has numerous awards, jury memberships, talks, exhibitions, many critical articles, and some built projects. And he has also a studio named Orpheus North Architects. So please join me in welcoming Hussein Yanar. So you can go on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, hello to everyone from Helsinki. Thank you for inviting me uh, to your conference. Uh, many thanks for the organizing committee, head of your school, uh, rector of your university, and the people who contributed to the event. All the best for the participant. Yes. Uh, uh, I will have uh, three stories for you. One will be um, uh, from the daily life, daily life from the first one. The second part will be from the nature. Uh, the third one uh, will be uh, uh, from a daily life experience from Helsinki downtown. This, these three parts, um, curtain, stick, and Hussam came together around the concept of ordinariness. Nature and daily life are the sources of the two main architectures around us and around our architecture. Yes, I believe that we have to go out of architecture to find our own architecture and come back it quite strongly. Yes, can we begin? to show the images. Oh. 
Okay. I live in Hamanti uh, Street in Helsinki. Uh, this uh, installation uh, very close to me. Some days ago, I was uh, walking uh, other side of the street. Uh, 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 I just stopped in front of the this installation. Uh, I am sure uh, I was passing through underneath of it. Uh, something was happening, but I didn't recognize. But uh, when I went the other side, I really looked at uh, it carefully. And uh, I took some photos with my camera and begin to think slowly, slowly. Of course, the legendary artists Christo and Jean Cloud came to my mind. Nowadays, they are in the agenda again. Uh, first, I thought that the facade was getting breathed. Uh, the fabric was moving and the wind was entering through the uh, holes. It was a tactile facade. Uh, 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 the ma many holes were cut and tiered in some kind of order by the workers, probably, just a minute, my microphone uh, mixed up with my glasses, the ropes of my glasses. Uh, uh, I thought that facade was getting breathed. Uh, uh, the fabric was moving and the wind was entering through the holes. Many holes were cut and teared in, the, in some kind of order by the workers, probably uh, in order to get air or even to get light. The two of the vertical parts of the surface were gently pulled left and right and created polygonal shapes accidentally, most probably accidentally. The contra contrast between the vertical and the square shapes were obvious and quite artistic for me and sketchy for me. Next, please. I saw the facade some days later. The magic was gone. I disappointed a lot. Almost all the holes and polygonal shapes were closed uh, due to cold weather, probably. Next, uh, please. And the, the restoration of the historical building was underway behind its construction. The real facade was behind the temporary installation, which was covered by the huge polypropylene, polypropylene fabric surface. I thought, uh, uh, I thought the temporary facade that uh, we see was the permanent one. I also thought that this building can be demolished after some years or even after a century. The building also will be a temporary one in a long time span anyway. Before continuing to my Sunday walk, I imagined the installation transforming to a curtain. It was just like a, in a theater. Then I remembered that I saw some people who were entering the building through the main door uh, beside the pedestrian road. Those people were still living in the flats of the building. They were simply behind the curtain like in a backstage of a theater. Suddenly I realized uh, a sweet bottle. I don't know whether it was sweet or strong, but there was a bottle, kind of bottle between kind of perfection and the imperfection. The curtain was imperfect, but it was quite arty and a representation of a other kind of architecture. It was showing the sketchy, unpolished street example of daily life with its all mistakes, whatever the mistake is. It was beautiful in its own way. When the restoration completes, the curtain will be opened. Another life will begin and a real architectural architecture will come to the stage. Most probably the facade will be polished 
and perfect like someone just made up just made a makeup the show will go on again like in everywhere perfect facades for perfectionist way to touch the built environment will go on of course i ask to myself repeatedly why we do why we are trying to do always perfect things as projects houses apartments furniture etc but the curtain was telling just opposite it was also perfect in another way whatever it is whatever it was the dialogue between me and the curtain was great in my last Sunday walk. I like the curtain and its message quite a lot. Okay, next please. I will uh, recite this story to you. I like uh, this story that I wrote. Uh, uh, earlier, uh, recite means uh, 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 poets are doing recites. We are not, I am not a poet, uh, but I try to write. Uh, uh, I wish I would remember every word that I wrote like a poet, but I will uh, read uh, by feeling it again. How important can a stick be? A common, ordinary stick. Still, who knows, maybe if we were to stop seeing it just as a stick, if we were to dig deeper, uh, we would see that uh, there is much more going on. Of course, that would depend on the stick. Uh, at hand, as well as uh, the effort put the imagining, creating, and understanding its narrative. Perhaps we would see that stick uh, isn't a stick at all. It is much the same with architecture as what we understand, or it differs from person to person. So there are thousands, tens of thousands of architectures. In this story, the lead actor is a stick completely ordinary, utterly indisquisible from the others. Maybe mystery exists in the midst of that which is unordinary, in the midst of that which merely appears to be ordinary. Who knows? Up here in the north, it's winter again, and the cold has crept in once more. The new year is behind us. Although they came late, the snows eventually arrived, followed by the ice, which stepped in line right behind it. And the commemorations began. The coming of the ice, much like its departure, is always an affair marked by certain differences. And it is one of the most important designs and transformations of space that can be seen and observed. Every year, those designs materialize in different way. This is an architecture which entirely unique to itself is practically spilling over with the magical moments, uh, an architecture that is put on display in a place found by nature that everyone will visit, a vast exhibition hall that nature discovered on its own. Next, please. Following the road that leads down from our neighborhood in Rohivori, I head to the seashore. I head to the seashore. I want to observe the arrival of the ice, which I do almost every year. As a result of a recent cold snap, uh, the sea is frozen, even more solid than it was yesterday. Yet again, the water and shoreline have become one. It is indescribable kind of unity. While I am tempted to say that borders of the city have shifted once more, it would perhaps be more correct to say that the borders have disappeared altogether. 
there, there are uh, already a few people walking and skiing over the ice to the opposite shore and nearby island. Breaking up my ears for the sound of cracking, I carefully step out onto the ice. From a distance, I gaze at the fluctuating rhythmic repetitions of the rows of reeds uh, along the bank. Please, next. Which I had photographed earlier in the year, observing that they resemble notes and onto blank uh, sheet uh, music. Some of these broken uh, strokes, uh, which seem to be different every time I come to waterfront, lie at a distance from the shore, clustered side by side. Next, please. Yesterday was one thing, today, today is another. Up the way is huge boulder that we sat on the last summer with the kids. Its surface baked, baked uh, warm under the sun. It has become uh, one with the surrounding trees. And the co as well, they have all became one. The ice has locked the boulder and the trees in its embrace like the base of a sculpture. Next, please. Okay, I don't say uh, please. I uh, think that I say all the time, many please to you. Uh, the waves appear to have frozen around it as they search uh, in and out. I stepped uh, from the frost crested top of those waves onto the boulder. Across the way, there is another call which looks all the more uh, mysterious thanks to the single wooden house perched on the shore, a small lone island, and the deep lines of perspective that stretch into the distance. Further up uh, is the place where we go out to swimming which involves cutting a hole in the ice so we can plunk into the icy water. And I can see that there are already a few people there, despite the nip in the air. The cracked ice has encrusted the stone of all sizes that rise up uh, along the shore and the army of reeds that remains in place all year around have become interconnected and icy grip. Next. Once again, time has stopped. Or at the very last, it has slowed uh, down to the point that it barely seemed to be ticking past. Silence prevails. Not a single sound can be heard. Deep fissures have all opened up in the ice around the boulder it has tried to envelop. Although they don't reveal much of themselves, these cracks look very different in the weak light of the sun. Last night, a storm blew through, leaving a, a layer of snow on the ice. Still, the frozen surface of the sea gleams in a few places where the wind draw the snow off, a snow drift has been blown up against the side of a large boulder. The crack uh, that have formed in the ice and chasing the boulder catch my eye. Please, next. There is a stick nearby laying on a glimmering patch of ice that contrasts with the snow drift in the background. Splintered, splintered uh, on one end, it appears to be an ordinary stick close to the point where it broke off. The stick forks into two branches that runs in parallel. Next, please. Their shadow dark and glossy eyes within a rather peculiar appearance. Surrounded by all the other visual attractions in the area, including the ice, boulders, 
and witness of the snow, the stick is quite ordinary, but it is precisely that ordinary which makes it stand out. After observing the stick for a while, I snap two pictures of its state of ordinariness. I try to draw closer to the stick with my eyes, even zoom in on it. Uh, and as I attempted to pull the stick into the realm of my imagination. Next, please. Its scale suddenly shifts as does the setting, uh, the stage. As it grows larger and larger, reaching immense proportions, the stick is transformed into a horizontal sculpture. By dint of its uh, interior and exterior, it becomes a space, a building. In short, anything it wants to become as a consequence of all that's trans transpiring, the stick is slowly being thrown out on the inside and outside. People walk around it, under it, over it. I murmur to myself, perhaps miracles lurk behind the ordinary. All of a sudden, the stick returns to its original state, once again, becoming an ordinary stick. I find myself mulling over the concepts of ordinariness. As I stand here, I begin to Thinking about the importance of ordinariness, of the state of being ordinary, situated amidst the, all the towering actors around the state of being ordinary and its otherwise imagined state of being are drawn together side by side. Then that large boulder I was standing on a little while ago. Even with its uh, massive girt, girt which uh, cast a, a shadow over a stick, the boulder nearly vanishes from the scene along the wheat frozen waves and everything else around it. Nothing remains, nothing the bay, nor the island, nor the shoreline. All that's left is that the stick I have been scrutinizing eye to eye. A question keeps running through my mind as I looked at the stick. What does it mean to be ordinary? What about ordinary architecture, ordinary architects? And what about unordinary or all those other things that merely appears to be ordinary? All those questions revolve around that simple stick spinning faster and faster. Next. Uh, like many system of belief, perhaps Zen Buddhism also extols the state of being ordinary. The temples I visited in the mountains of South Korea were filled with ordinary people of all ages by means of slowly everything down by the way of meditation or rumination. Most people like them strive to achieve an ordinary life. Maybe they do so through this creation of simple ordinary designs and the search for mysteries concealed behind the ordinariness, which make it possible to start each day afresh. That anonymous ordinary stick in order in front of me, humble yet proudly creates a space of its own through its peculiar ordinariness, taking pride in being a part of this extraordinary locale and this design which changes day in and out. In other words, the natural environments and architecture of this place. In architecture of nature, money has no place, nor are there any plans or the programs of the action. Nature has no crowning projects akin to those of architecture, nor even traces of projects. It is not based on the designs by means of which results are attaining in a step-by-step -step manner, nor are the outcomes known in advance. Likewise, there are no plans, no side plans. Nature creates its own plans on a moment, next please, to moment 
on a moment to moment impromptu basis. Every instant of the architecture of this place is spontaneous and it is possible, impossible to know what will happen next day. Prescience uh, it's, is unwanted here. Neither the past nor the future matter. What is important is the present. Existing, everything exists for the here and now. That's uh, just how it goes, but all the same, it sometimes seems as if every moment has been carefully thought out. As I look around more and more questions rush through my mind. So if there is architecture, what about the other one? And if that's the architecture, we know what is this? What are these states, these designs of nature? All I know is that I really don't, don't know what architecture is, or perhaps I don't want to know. But I say to myself, there is something of which I am certain architecture is not just the art of creating building and building, build building, building buildings that get all attention that holds true in the context of all the rough and tumble buildings and projects that have been carried out. And if we take that point even further, the fact remains that some of them are even going up in the midst of the ruins. What's more, I have become increasingly convinced that in this way of architecture has gotten caught up in a dirtier side of business and that like other related industries, it has been put into the service of rebuilding cities that have uh, been raised, striped, bare and depopulated as a result of wars. They have been started on the basis of any number of excuses, flimsy excuses. Moreover, it has become apparent uh, that program launch in launch in the name of stimulating economies, particularly in the case of developing countries, are often tucked away behind the goose of architecture by means of sham projects and design, and also that all kinds of city spaces have been more and less reduced to fake construction site for the sake of raking in money, as has been seen in quite a few urban settings. Furthermore, it seems that while those aspects of architecture that are indexed to money have become entangled with the life, design has become embroiled in the construction of buildings and also that whether we like it or not, one way or another, we have perhaps become links in this entire change, a part of whole generally as a consequence of education schools to prevailing mentality in society and publications. In the face of that panorama, a wave of concern washes over me. Perhaps it is a momentary reflex, but I find myself drawn to the other extreme and a question crops up in my mind. What would it be like if an ordinary life, an ordinary form of architecture, an ordinary architectural education an ordinary post-educational life were actors in this environment. And if it were the case, if were the case, should they play a lead role? I also ask myself time to time again, if a certain form of architecture was experienced, learned and executed in an ordinary manner, but in addition to being embedded in that ordinariness, was also endowed with other meanings and values. What would it be like? What kind of architecture would it lead to? Next, please. I will draw this essay to a close with an anecdote about someone I recently met in Helsinki. For days, I, I've been meaning in get my hair cut and it reached the point that I could wait no longer. 
towards the end of the day, I went to a number of barbers, but they were either full or didn't take customers without a reservation. I vaguely recalled that there were some uh, barber shops in Arca Arcade behind the World Design Center, which was situated alongside of the road that ran behind between Stockmans and the academic bookstore of Alto. So I headed in that direction. My memory saved me, served me right. My memory served me right. Although it was almost closing time, I managed to find a barber shop that was open and it was quite crowded. There was a notice on the door, the details of which I didn't bother reading. It said that haircuts cost 20 euro which seemed reasonable to me, so I stepped inside. It immediately became apparent, however, that some of the barbers were in fact students from the hairdressing school doing their internship. Fair enough, I said to myself, there were three barber chains in the narrow space of the shop, two of which were already occupied by the customers, getting their hair cut by interns, just as I was wondering which interns was going to cut my hair, I was approached by a close man who turned out to be the owner of the shop. In line with our tradition, he shocked my head, head and then he uh, motioned for me to sit in an empty chair. I could tell right away that he had plenty of experience under his belt. After dropping a white uh, cape over me, he asked what kind of haircut I would like. Gesturing towards my rather dis, dis uh, hair, I said, I would like it pretty sure, short. Where open, he asked, would you like me to take it all the way down with a straight razor? Next, please. I was about to say, why not? I've never had my head uh, shaved, but at the last second, I changed my mind. Let's not go that far, I said, but I would like it short. He set to work and cut my hair. We chatted a bit, and before I knew it, he was finished. Never in my life had I seen a barber work uh, with uh, such uh, swift dexterity, and I can still remember the sound of a rapid snip snip of his scissors. I glanced at the clock on the wall. It was seven o'clock, meaning that it could have taken him more than eight minutes to cut my hair, which indeed was quite short now. I moved to myself such speed and result at uh, one point he had told me that his father and has been a barber that he had followed his uh, father's uh, footsteps keeping the tradition alive the final act proceeded as follows as he was holding up a mirror behind me slowly moving it uh, to the left to right and as i turned my head in synced uh, with the mirror i murmured Wow, that's so much better. Looking me in the eyes through the mirror, he said, just ordinary. Then he added, succinctly uh, summing uh, up the totality of everything. Good to be ordinary. Those two brief sentences spoken by Hussam, who was originally from Palestine and whom I, I had met just minutes earlier, imparted to me profound wisdom, just as I, would I had learned so much from nature's compact orientation. It all swapped around me, that broken stick, the shores of Rohimori, my walk, the cult, the nature, the ice architecture, as I set that chair in Usam's barber shop. But architecture seemed a bit uneasy quietly withdrawing as it listened to what the others had to say. And everything was a little bit ordinary, uh, a bit ordinary, including the shop, the barber, the customers, and even my hair. 
In short, there were all enjoying the state of being ordinary, just as I too revealed in it. Far out uh, away in that corner of Helsinki, as the Hour Grieve late seated among the others who were a well may have been unaware of what had just happened. This is end of my presentation. I need few sentences more. The early version of this essay was released in Architerakom in Turkish. I also, uh, I wrote this article for the memory of our col uh, colleague, uh, Professor Aitanga Dener. Uh, we lost her some years ago, accidentally, with a, in an accident. Uh, this essay will be in, in my forthcoming book with the other 13 articles. I am the final process of completing the whole set of, set of uh, together with uh, translator Mark Weyers, layout designer Timo Setala, and my publisher and photographer UC Tiainan. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any question or any back, uh, uh, feedback, please ask. Thank you very much to everybody for listening. Uh, you can write uh, your questions Q and A or raise uh, your hand uh, so that we can see. It took uh, 37 minutes. Okay, uh, maybe I may start the discussion. Because Great. I, I, I have a question for you. Um, as you speak, I try to match your talk with architecture and a question came to my mind. And uh, can we design the possibilities and poetics of architecture? And then I started to think on uh, Peter Zumthor's works because I think uh, he also designs the fourth dimension like uh, smell or atmosphere. So my question is, uh, can architects design uh, the possibilities and poetics or is it just a feeling that the users feel? What do you think about it? Uh, can we uh, design possibilities and poetics? Uh, hmm. Uh, very sketchy uh, question you asked, and uh, uh, we can pull it uh, to quite uh, uh, poetic side. Uh, of course, I believe possibilities has to be uh, one of our biggest hope. Uh, uh, there are lots of possibilities. Uh, uh, thousands of thousand possibilities. Maybe we are deciding every day many possibilities when we go out of home. Like when I showed you this uh, strange facade, everybody passes in front of it. I was passing, maybe I even passed from the other side by never recognized, but one day came, I was ready to look at it. When I look at it, I saw many things behind, even the discussion between perfectionism, imperfectionism, sketchiness, uh, really like a, a, a finished product. We architect, architects likes to finish, but uh, my teacher was not like that. That's why I, am, I love uh, sketches uh, because I see many possibilities in it. My teacher, Professor Mohamed Onat, uh, many years back in the Academy of Fine Arts, now Mimar Sinan uh, uh, Fine Arts University, uh, I learned sketching. Uh, but the possibilities are around all the time. Of course, uh, art is important. Without art, we cannot breathe. It becomes kind of uh, architecture with the numbers and the calculations, architecture is not like that. For my opinion, like uh, to imagining possibilities and to go further 
This is also depending on you, depending on everybody. Peter Zumtur is doing like that. Uh, he came to Helsinki also, gave an amazing lecture. And uh, even in one lecture, they were together with uh, uh, Ioanni Palatsma and uh, Peter Zumter together. They were dialoguing, dialoguing together and they were totally different people, but they were this quite the same people on the other hand. They liked a lot to art and like myself because I grown up in an art school and I never forget the feeling of art. That's why I find my way with the artists what they do and then try to combine with architecture. Architecture become engineering uh, in some way. Uh, even it can be in the umbrella of uh, uh, engineering, uh, like in Korea, it was like that. But now they say in the umbrella of uh, built environment, for example, England or in Tampere, in our, our department, in built environment. So very nice you ask, possibilities and poetics. I think they are uh, hand in hand, they, they must go and then find the answer by ourselves. Yeah, I can say like that. Thank you very much. Uh, Melis will, maybe Melis will ask. <laughs> Melis is laughing right now. <laughs> No, she will ask maybe. <laughs> I have, a, have not a question, but uh, I think images are very exciting. Maybe hmm. your presentation is like poetry, special section of the piece. Thank you so hmm. much. <laughs> uh, thank you. The photographs that I selected are special photographs for me over the years. And uh, 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 I will put it as I thought uh, to a uh, new book uh, with the others, with the other uh, uh, articles. Thank you for listening and making interpretation and liking my photos and my presentation. Thanks a lot. Okay. Is there anyone? You can also raise your hand if you like to ask something. No more. Maybe you can ask in Turkish. Yeah, of course. If you have anything. I think that's all. Okay. We can, okay. We can end the session if you like. Thank you very much for your yeah. uh, questions and for invitations. All Thank the you. best for the uh, uh, participants. Thank you so much. It's an inspiring uh, speech for me and I think for everybody. And so now we will take a coffee break and we will meet again at two o'clock for the concurrent session. So. Thank you very much again.